In this video, we're going to talk about inheritance patterns. How do we get traits from our parents? How do we pass traits on to our children? Heredity is the study of how we pass on traits to offspring. And we're going to look at how Mendel studied pea plants. He was lucky that he chose pea plants because they have a lot of dominant and recessive traits and he followed those traits through generations and he figured out how things were inherited or passed on, which is actually a pretty amazing feat considering that at the time he didn't even know, nobody knew, that DNA was the hereditary material. So Mendel studied his pea plants in the mid 1800s and we didn't know that DNA was our hereditary material until about 1928. In this diagram, we can see two chromosomes. One, the red one, let's suppose this one came from our mom, and the blue one, let's suppose this one came from our dad. Those chromosomes that come from each parent are called homologous chromosomes. When DNA replicates, we form sister chromatids. So the replicated chromosomes are always going to be the same and homologous chromosomes could be different. Let's suppose we have a gene here called A. Let's suppose it's for hair color. If this allele for hair color, let's suppose mom has a brown hair color gene and dad has a blonde hair color gene we can show that these are different versions of the gene by using a capital letter or a small letter. These different versions of the genes are called alleles. Sometimes the alleles could be the same. It's possible that dad could have a brown hair allele as well. So sometimes the alleles are the same and sometimes the alleles are different. And depending on what these alleles are and which chromosome gets put into the gametes when dad makes sperm, he will only be able to contribute a small a allele or the blonde hair allele. When mom makes gametes, she will only be donating the brown hair allele. So different gametes are going to get different chromosomes. We talked about that in the meiosis video, how the chromosomes are split up. So these different versions of a gene are called alleles. When we inherit traits, we get 23 of our chromosomes from mom and 23 of our chromosomes from dad. Our mom and dad have 46. When they make sperm and eggs, they are dividing their 46 chromosomes into haploid gametes. When we acquire those alleles from our parents, we call those genes our genotype. The genotype are the gene combinations that we got from our parents. So if we got a brown hair allele from our mom and a blonde hair allele from our dad, those are our alleles that makes up our genotype. Then what we end up looking like, that is our phenotype. So if we end up with brown hair, then our phenotype is brown hair. If you have different alleles, you can have different kinds of phenotypes. We're going to look in this video, we are only going to look at single gene inheritance. So we'll pick some trait like being a purple pea plant or having brown hair. And we're going to follow the genotype and phenotype from parents to offspring. In this slide, you can see different pea plant phenotypes. Pea plants, for example, could be round or wrinkled, yellow or green. They could have inflated pods or constricted pods. They could have purple flowers or white flowers. These are examples of phenotypes. Now the genes that make up these phenotypes, that is the genotype. In this video, we're gonna focus on traits that are inherited in a dominant and recessive pattern. Dominant traits are going to be expressed in the phenotype and recessive traits are only expressed if both alleles are recessive. When you have a dominant trait, let's suppose brown hair is dominant and blonde hair is recessive. If you have two brown hair alleles, you'll have brown hair. If you have a brown hair and a blonde hair allele, you will express the dominant allele. In this example, it's brown hair. 
the only way that you can have blonde hair is if you have both blonde hair alleles. So to show the recessive trait, you need both alleles to be recessive. So our genotype comes from our DNA. The DNA is going to be the alleles that you get from your parents. So let's suppose we use purple and white flowers from our pea plant example. In pea plants, purple is dominant and white flowers are recessive. If we have a purple allele and a white allele, this is the genotype. What will this pea plant look like? The phenotype is purple flowers. Remember DNA codes for RNA, that codes for a protein. In this example, the protein is going to be a purple pigment. When we have two alleles that are the same, we call them homozygous. When two alleles are different, we call those heterozygous. In this example, we have a purple pea plant that is heterozygous because it has a dominant allele and a recessive allele. All the possible combinations of genotype and phenotype for this example using purple and white flowers. If you are homozygous dominant, you are going to be a purple pea plant. If you are a heterozygous, you are also going to be purple. And then homozygous recessive is going to be white. So the only way to express the recessive phenotype is to have both recessive alleles. We've covered a lot of terminology. Before we move on, I wanna make sure that you understand, you have a good understanding of some terminology. Make sure that these words make sense to you. Alleles, genotypes, phenotypes, dominant and recessive, homozygous and heterozygous. Okay, all of that is clear. Now we're gonna talk about probability. Okay, actually, you know what? Okay, let's flip a coin. When you flip a coin, what's the probability that you'll get a head or a tail? It's 50-50, right? You have two choices. You can get the tail or you can get the head. We can get a tail or we can get a head if we flip that coin one time. Tail. If we flip the coin, we have a 50% chance of getting a tail and a 50% chance of getting a head or we can say we have half of a chance of the tail and half a chance of the head. If we flip the coin two times, then each time we flip the coin, there is a 50% chance of getting a head or a tail. But what is the probability of getting two tails in a row? If you flip the coin the first time, you have 0.5, Second time is 0.5, you multiply those and you end up with 0.25 or 25% chance, or we can say one quarter. So we have a 25% chance of getting two tails. We have a 50% chance of getting a tail and a head in any order. So we could get the tail and then the head, or we could get the head and then the tail, but there is about a 50% chance we will get one of each. And then there is a 25% chance that we will get two heads. This is the same as the probability of getting both dominant alleles from your parents, or getting um, a dominant and a recessive and being a heterozygote, or getting both recessive and being a homozygous recessive. This is the most complicated that this whole thing is going to get. We're always going to be looking at one trait and we're always going to be looking at dominant and recessive and we're going to look at the probability of getting certain traits from your parents. In this diagram, we are going to look at purple pea plants. 
and we have two parent plants here. We have a mom pea plant and a dad pea plant. The mom pea plant is a heterozygote. So she has a dominant allele and a recessive allele. And the dad is also a heterozygote. So he also has a dominant and a recessive. These parents are going to produce gametes. When they produce gametes, they are going to be separating the homologous chromosomes. Okay, watch the meiosis video if you forget how that works. When this mom pea plant makes gametes, the gamete can either have the dominant purple allele or it can have the recessive white allele. And dad, when he produces gametes, same thing. He can have, the gamete could have the dominant allele or the gamete could have the recessive allele. So then how do these combine will form the offspring. If the dominant allele from the mom combines with the dominant allele from the dad, we will have a homozygous dominant purple baby pea plant. If the dominant allele from the mom and the recessive allele from the dad combine, we have a heterozygous purple pea plant. Same with here. The recessive allele is coming from the mom. The dominant allele is coming from the dad. Heterozygous offspring. If the recessive allele from the mom and the recessive allele from the dad combine, now we have a white homozygous recessive baby pea plant. If we have heterozygous parents, what is the probability that they will have purple babies? They have a 75% chance of having purple offspring. What's the probability they will have white offspring? 25% chance. What is the probability that these offspring will be homozygous dominant? That's 25% chance of being homozygous dominant. 50% chance of being heterozygous. That's how we're going to follow the alleles from the parents to the offspring. There is always a way to do it. Every single time we do a Punnett square, we're going to do the exact same steps. Number one, we are going to figure out the genotype of the parents, okay? The genotype is the genes. Are they homozygous or heterozygous? Do they have dominant or recessive alleles? Number two, we're going to look at the gametes of the parents. Based on their genotype, what kind of gametes can they form? The gametes of the parents always go on the outside of the box. Now we figure out the genotypes of the offspring. You combine the different combinations of alleles inside the boxes and that gives you the genotype of the offspring. And then lastly, Based on the genotype of the offspring, you can figure out the phenotype of the offspring. The other thing that I wanna point out, you can use any letter for any of the traits. I find the simplest way is to use the letter of the dominant trait. Let's suppose yellow is dominant over green, okay, if you're a pea plant. Yellow being dominant, I would use a capital Y to show yellow. And because green is recessive, I would use a small y because it's for the same trait. If you use a y and a g, you're gonna get confused, okay? So use capital letters for dominant traits and small letters for recessive traits. Okay, let's look at an example. Here we are going to cross a homozygous green parent plant with a heterozygous yellow plant. Okay, number one, the first thing we have to do is figure out the genotype of the parents. Here we have a homozygous green and we have heterozygous and yellow is dominant. If yellow is dominant, we're going to use a capital Y to show yellow and we're going to use a small y to show green. So the homozygous green parent plant, their genotype 
is Y, Y. Let's say that's the mom plant. And the dad plant is heterozygous and yellow. Heterozygous means the alleles are different. So he has a capital Y and a small Y. There's our dad. Okay, we figured out the genotypes of our parents. Step two, we are going to figure out the gametes of the parents. When the parents are making gametes, they are going to separate their homologous chromosomes. So the mom pea plant, let's put mom over here, she can only donate two recessive alleles. We will put the dad pea plant up here. He has a dominant and a recessive allele. So a dominant and a recessive. Step three, we're going to figure out the genotypes of the offspring. When we do that, we're going to use this Punnett square. The offspring are always inside the boxes. We're going to bring this allele from the dad plant and this allele from the mom plant. This offspring is going to be a heterozygote. If we put the mom allele and the dad allele here, we have two recessive alleles. We have a homozygous recessive. This offspring will be heterozygous and this offspring will be homozygous recessive. And then the last step is to figure out the offspring's phenotype. If this offspring is a heterozygote, is it green or yellow? What's the phenotype? This phenotype is going to be yellow. How about this one? When you have both recessive alleles, then you are green. This one is yellow, and this one is green. So what is the probability of having yellow offspring in this example? The probability is 50%. 50% of these offspring from these parents are going to be yellow. So now I want you to do something. I want you to interlace your fingers together. Okay? Now I want you to look down at your hands and see which thumb is on top. Is your left one on top or is your right one on top? If your left one is on top, you are showing the dominant phenotype. So you could be homozygous dominant or you could be a heterozygote. If your right thumb is on top, then you're homozygous recessive and you have both recessive alleles. There's a few traits in humans that are dominant and recessive, but most traits are actually what we call polygenic. And that means more than one gene contributes to that trait. So eye color, for example, has multiple genes. How tall you are, there's multiple genes that contribute to those phenotypes. But here's a chart that shows some things that tend to show a dominant and recessive kind of pattern. Maybe go home and check out your parents and your siblings and see who got what traits.